Diharapkan kita dapat membendung penyelan penyakit jangkitan COVID-19. Terima kasih. Penularan COVID-19 bukan sahaja meragut nyawa. Memang ada dan penularan COVID-19 juga ada di Indonesia. has been an eventful year and rather a unique one for Malaysia. While the world suffers from the COVID-19 pandemic, Malaysia at the same time saw its power struggle unfold, with the sudden resignation of Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad as the Prime Minister of Malaysia on February 24. As the year draws to a close, let us recap on the key events that happened throughout the year from the economic and political perspective. Malaysia experienced an increase of COVID-19 outbreak during early March of 2020. The number of new daily positive cases hit double digits during that period. To curb the pandemic, the Malaysian government announced the Movement Control Order or the MCO to prevent the coronavirus from spreading. It was enforced on March 18. The practice of self-quarantine and social distancing were conducted during the order. However, the enforcement of MCO would have its negative impact. The economic activity in the country was momentarily halted as only businesses selling essential goods were allowed to operate during the order. It was uncertain when the MCO would be lifted. Business owners were concerned on when they could resume operations. They would have to bear with the operating costs despite not generating any revenue. To countermeasure the absence of economic activity, Prime Minister Muhyiddin unveiled the Prihatin Rakyat Economic Stimulus Package on March 27. It was worth 250 billion ringgit in total. Within the Prihatin Rakyat Initiative, 25 billion ringgit are direct fiscal injection, primarily comes from the cash distribution of Bantuan Prihatin National. Subsequently, Prime Minister Muhyiddin announced an additional 10 billion ringgit allocation for Prihatin Rakyat, which specifically targeted at the SMEs, which is also known as Prihatin Tambahan. Then, on June 5, there was the National Economic Recovery Plan, or Punjana, as the nation proceeds with the Recovery Movement Control Order to combat the ongoing pandemic. However, with numerous stimulus packages set in place, the government faces an imminent threat in which its debt is projected to grow at an unprecedented speed. National debt is expected to inch up to further hit 61% of gross domestic product in 2021, up from 60.7% in 2020 and 52.5% in 2019. Meanwhile, revenue is projected to decrease by 14% to 227.3 billion ringgit in 2020 from 264.4 billion ringgit last year as a result of lower tax collection. Besides that, unemployment is expected to shoot up. The unemployment rate in Malaysia experienced an increase in March 2020, the month when the MCO was first enforced. The unemployment rate was at 3.9%, increased by 0.6% compared to February 2020. In other words, there were over 610,000 unemployed persons in the country. On the other hand, the number of job vacancies in Malaysia had been decreasing since the end of 2017. A slight improvement occurred in 2018 but was later dropped again in 2019 and hit its lowest in March 2020. This indicated the MCO did not only affect the unemployment rate in the country but also the job availability. The global demand for crude oil had also plunged, leading to decline in its price. As an oil-producing country, Malaysia was deeply affected by the cash, potentially losing roughly 31 billion ringgit in oil revenue. 
Hans Bank Negara Malaysia forecasted that Malaysia's GDP for 2020 would be between negative 2% to 0.5%. The airlines industry have also been heavily affected from the pandemic. Travelling in and out of the country has been temporarily prohibited because of the MCO. Numerous hotels have been temporarily shut down as it is not viable to operate during the pandemic. Subsequently, hotel staff have also been laid off. For example, Park Royal Hotel has been shut down for 15 months, using this time for renovation work. Voluntary separation scheme VSS was offered to its employees. According to Tourism Malaysia, tourist arrivals to Malaysia from January to September this year declined 78.6% over the same period last year following the COVID-19 pandemic. Due to the decline in tourists, the government revenue from the tourism sector would undoubtedly be affected. During the post-pandemic period, Malaysia would also be depending on domestic tourists to generate revenue in this sector. At the same time, it would be a challenge to encourage Malaysians to enjoy the leisure in travelling amidst the current economic situation. The MCO period have certainly caused great harm to the economy. Despite that, there are certain industries that have grown bigger because of the pandemic. The demand for rubber products is moving upward during the global crisis. This is due to the increasing demand for rubber gloves across the globe, serving as a medical supply to combat the pandemic. A day after the enforcement of MCO, leading Malaysia rubber glove manufacturer Top Gloves sales order book was reported to have doubled following the rapid spread of COVID-19 across continents as orders stream in from countries affected by the pandemic. The second biggest winner is e-commerce. Since the implementation of the MCO, all purchases can only be made online via the internet, bringing great improvement to the e-commerce business. The MCO was also the best opportunity to drive people to adopt to e-commerce. For people who do not use the platform before this, the pandemic had forced them to acquire goods from the platform and might accelerate the adaptation rate, particularly among the elder generation. At the time the world was consumed with the COVID-19 virus, Malaysia in particular was also going through political uncertainty. Prior to the MCO, the 2020 Malaysian political crisis happened, leading to a change in government. PPBM left Pakatan Harapan and formed a new alliance with the former government Barisan National along with PAS. The current pre katan National government was established with Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin as the Prime Minister. Although the pandemic had halted the political development in the country, major events had happened, bringing more uncertainty to the newly minted government. This includes the motion of no confidence towards the Prime Minister, the internal bickering between AMNO and PPBM, as well as Anwar Ibrahim claiming to have a majority. Just recently, Malaysia's Supply Bill 2021 passed its third reading in the lower house with a division vote. A total of 111 MPs voted in favour of the budget, while 108 voted against the bill, while one was absent. While the results showed that the Prime Minister still commands the majority support, it should not be used as an official yardstick to measure the real support enjoyed by the Prime Minister, Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin. Additionally, the slim lead leaves room for a non-confidence vote to happen, and this time around, there is a possibility that the MPs might vote differently. As a conclusion, pre National is still fragile. From the perspective of economy, a fragile government would leave investors to become extra cautious in their spending, ultimately leading to the potential investment decline in the country.